Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And we will start with that breaking news out of Lincoln Park at this hour where an officer has been shot in the leg. Right now, investigators have a stretch of outer drive blocked off as they collect evidence near the old hospital building. You can see some of those evidence markers spread out across the roadway. Now, there is also a silver pickup truck being towed from the scene. According to our crew on the ground, officers from Southgate, Trenton, River Rouge, Lincoln Park, Woodhaven, and Detroit all responded to this call. The alleged shooter is in custody. No word on what led to the shooting. We'll keep you updated on this breaking news. Now to Oakland County, where an oil well explosion just rocked the Milford area. Now, this happened at the GM Proving Grounds. We're told the oil wells are leased and operated by a third party. Local for Shante Passmore spent the day digging into exactly what happened and where things go now in terms of this investigation. Shante? Yeah, Karen, listen to this. Five miles from where I'm standing right now this evening. That's how far some people say they felt this blast. As for some homes nearby, we are hearing reports of some minor damage, such as some cracked glass, as well as some cracked foundations. But while the fire is out right now, the investigation, of course, far from over. As mentioned earlier, the oil wells are leased and operated by a third party. And right now we're learning it's an energy company called T2 Energy oh Solutions. Just before 7 a.m., Area fire departments received a call for the blast on site at GM Proving Ground. A big reason for the massive response, no fire hydrants in the area. So crews had to supply water for firefighters battling the raging flames. And we've heard people describe the explosion as sounding like thunder. One woman even said her house windows rattled so hard it woke her up. We thought at first it was like, couldn't be the wind, right? There's no way wind makes that kind of noise. So yeah, it was pretty loud. And a lot of questions, as you can imagine, besides what happened, how often are these oil wells checked? Well, in an hour, we are going to get the latest inspection reports and share that with you. And also, where does the investigation go from here? But for now, reporting live, Shante Passmore, Local 4. All right, thank you, Shante. We'll look forward to that report at 5. Other news right now, teacher who was shot at Oxford High School is now suing the district. In a lawsuit that was filed today, former teacher Molly Darnell is accusing Oxford High School officials of ignoring clear signals of impending gun violence from the shooter. Now, this comes as the Oakland County Prosecutor's Office is calling for the judge to reject the shooter's request. Right now, the prosecutor's office is working with Michigan's Attorney General to launch a state-level investigation into that shooting. A teenager facing charges right now after accidentally shooting his 12 year old cousin. This happened over on Detroit's east side. We were on the scene early this morning over at a home on St. Aubin Street near to Quinder and Seven Mile. The older 16 year old cousin was arrested, made an appearance in court this afternoon. The teen is charged with careless discharge of a firearm causing injury. The 12 year old was shot in the arm. Not clear if the gun is registered or if the owners had secured it in the home. We're working to get those details and we'll give you an update as this investigation continues. Big change could be coming to the familiar Detroit skyline. Take a look at these renderings provided by Bedrock and General Motors. Now, there are discussions in the works that would involve knocking down the two towers at the Renaissance Center, but this project comes with a hefty price tag of $1.6 billion. Bedrock and GM are asking for some of that number to be paid with taxpayer dollars. Ahead of five, we are going to explain some of the developments we are told this money will be used for. As you saw right here on Local 4, President Biden just announced Israel and Hezbollah have accepted a proposal for a ceasefire. Under the deal, the fighting at the Israeli-Lebanese border will end. The ceasefire is expected to go into effect at 4 a.m. local time. Earlier today, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he had recommended that his cabinet agree to the deal with Hezbollah, which began trading fire with Israel a day after Hamas's October 7, 2023 terrorist attack. We're working the story and we'll have much more on this new development that just happened this afternoon when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. All right, let's take a live look. Look at that. Campus marshes, they're getting the ice ready. The tree is up. The holiday season, I say, has begun, but I really feel like it officially begins, obviously, on Thanksgiving morning. Oh, right. it can start as early as September for some. <laughs> I do know this. I do uh, know Hobby this. Hobby Lobby is July, right? <laughs> um, no, it's, it definitely is going to feel like the holidays yeah. now. We kind of missed our fall a little mm -hmm. bit, I felt and then like. All the people that are coming into town to visit family were like, hey, get ready. Get it's ready. Cold. It's Michigan. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, we have some clouds out there in a few spots, but overall, 
a nice dose of sunshine for us out at Metro Airport. And you can see that camera shaking around. It is windy, but nothing that is affecting travel out at the airport. 43 degrees right now with that's a normal high for this time of year. 42 in Pontiac, low 40s in Gross Seal and also in Port Huron. You can really see that camera shaking around right now. We have winds out of the west southwest sustained around 13 to 18 miles per hour, but a few gusts are over 20 to 25, but it's a good day for travel. There are no major travel problems across much of the country. If you are headed up north, though, just know that it's been snowing. It's going to continue to snow, so that's actually what a lot of people want when they head up north for tomorrow. That travel forecast for southeast lower Michigan later, like around eight, nine o'clock, we might see a sprinkle or maybe a snowflake mixed in, but overall looks like a pretty decent travel day. And then the bottom falls out and it gets it's quite a bit colder by the weekend and we'll talk more about the parade forecast and also something headed our way for Thursday night that I think you're going to want to know about as well. All right, shares of the big three automakers dropped today after President-elect Trump vowed to impose 25% tariffs on goods from Canada and Mexico. Now, Trump says he's imposing tariffs in an effort to put pressure on Mexico, Canada, and China to control the drug crisis and also the invasion of illegal immigrants. And it's not just cars. President-elect Trump is threatening tariffs on many of the items that come to the U.S. from other countries. So we're going to bring in consumer investigator Hank Winchester, and he joins us now with the very latest in terms of what we are talking about. Audio difficulties. Sorry about that, Hank. Um, you're t you, no you got, problem. That's okay. You got cut off a little bit in terms of those everyday items. So talk to me about that one more time, if you don't mind, in terms of what folks are going to have to deal it's with. It, it's because it's so windy here, Karen, along the uh, riverfront here. That's why we're having some issues. Let me get you through it. Here are some of the items we're talking about. Uh, toys, furniture, electronics, any items that are made overseas. Uh, in China, for example, we're also talking about certain food items that may be making their way over from Mexico and auto parts. Uh, and obviously, you know, with the auto parts being shipped back and forth here from Canada, too, uh, that is a huge concern in regards to our negotiations and our labor, labor re relations rather uh, with those countries including Canada it's an economy experts what does Wall Street think about the proposed move Right now, Karen, they don't like it. Uh, you mentioned uh, the autos, that they already took a hit today uh, on the market. Uh, you're looking at General Motors right now down about 8%, Stellantis about 5 Ford down about 2%. But again, this is kind of a wait and see thing. Many are wondering whether this is just a threat from the president-elect, a negotiation tactic, or whether he's moving full steam ahead. And this is what we could expect to roll out starting January 20th of 2025. Right. Uh, we're going to have much more for you, including expert analysis tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll send it back to you. All right. We appreciate it. We'll let you get out of the wind.